Logan. I went up to Logan and uh, I, uh, I got a job this summer and um, I spent the entire summer um, telling people when they asked me, uh, where do you work? Well, I, I work at the B-Lab. Where's the B-Lab? Or what's the B-Lab? Uh, you know, like, like bees, you know, honey kind. So um, they'd ask me that and I'd uh, say, um, you know, like bees. And they'd say, the honey kind? And I said, no, not the honey kind, all the other ones. So what we're talking about exactly is there's 3,500 known North American uh, species of bees, plus a few. There's about uh, 350 to 500 others that they have collected, but they haven't identified them. So they're either new bees or we don't know. So um, there's, there's a few of them out there. So um, a lot of them don't have common names. They just have scientific names. A few that you might know is the LC bees, leafcutter bees, blue orchard bees, also called the mason bees. Um, bumblebees, there's quite a few different kinds of bumblebees out there. Um, carpenter bees, digger bees, yellow-faced bees, plaster bees, there's lots of different kinds of bees. There's even seal bees, cute little bees. Um, <laughs> so a lot of these bees, uh, there's multiple kinds of each one. So um, most, of the, most of these bees are solitary. They nest in mud, they nest in leaves, whatever they can find, in branches. Um, a lot of the stuff that you'd haul out of your yard when you're cleaning. Um, they're characterized, characterized by wings and tongue. Um, and they're generally very hairy because they pick up a lot of pollen and take it back to the nest. Right here you see a female. Um, they have the pointy black butts and they load up the pollen on their bellies and then they go back to their nests. They also cut the leaves out. So if you've seen that in your yard, that's who's doing it. Um, if you garden. Uh, right here on my hand, you see some bees. We, uh, we do, uh, I was working at the bee lab and we would do um, where we'd weigh them and we'd do a catch and release. So. Um, they hatch from cocoons usually around May and June. Um, males mate with the females and then die off. Um, and then the females start laying the eggs in uh, cavities um, and they close them all off. But they can pick which, uh, which type of egg they want to lay. Um, so if you've seen them, they're, just, they're kind of in a straw form. So um, here's, a, here's an example of them. They, um, they lay them in there and then move to the next. The females get to, get to decide, like I said, which, which egg they lay. The eggs that they lay that are not fertilized are males. The females are diploid. Those are the fertilized eggs. So they're very important because of their role as pollinators and all of the stuff that they're pollinating. They pollinate fruits, nuts, vegetables, clover, everything that you can possibly think of. They're out there pollinating it. Um, and that's a, a really big reason why they're so important right now. Um, Studies are showing a decline in populations, um, some dramatic, like up to 90% uh, decline in the population. Um, how do you weigh a bee? With a very small scale. Um, <laughs> yes, he's uh, 0 0.0258 grams. Um, we also did x-rays this summer. Um, research is currently being conducted on the bumblebee decline because there's a lot of bumblebees that are going away. Effects of chemicals, pesticides, fungicides used on crops. Uh, what they're doing to damage the bee populations. Their behavior changes as they encounter chemicals. Um, they're also doing genetic mapping so they can see why the bees are doing what they're doing, why some of the bees are doing better than others, um, and how they're resistant to diseases, pathogens, parasites. Um, they're also looking um, at all of the other uh, environmental factors. Uh, where's it happening? Um, there are five USDA bee labs in the United States. Uh, four specifically work with honeybees. One is dedicated specifically to all the other bees. Um, and it is located in uh, Cache Valley, Utah, uh, Logan, where I work this summer. Um, they're um, all of the other bees, all of the other insects that are out there pollinating. They're located in Cache Valley, like I said, and they do have a bee museum, which is awesome. Uh, it's the third, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's the third largest bee specimen collection in the, wor in the world. It's referred to the, uh, as the bee museum, except for all of the bees are actually in shelves and boxes and cupboards and, and like loaded up and like packed in really tight because they have so many of them. Not enough space to put them. So how, what can you do to help with the bees? Um, create bee-friendly habitat. Leave some of that stuff you know, laying around the yard. That's kind of where they nest. Um, plant flora to attract the bees. Create nesting areas. They've got cute little boxes on the internet that you can buy. Um, and then only spray chemicals if you absolutely have to and not where they're at. Um, not while they're out there. So your tax dollars are at work. There's the USDA Agricultural Research Service and they have all this information about all the research that they're doing on anything and everything under the sun. Um, Logan has three departments, the Forge Range Research Lab, the Poisonous Plant Lab, and the Pollinating Inser in Insect Research Lab. So that's where you can go for more information or catch me afterwards and uh, the scientists in Logan are great.